Well, build my gallows and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance to spend... Hello everybody, welcome to Long Bangers, I'm May. Good morning, I'm Colin, afternoon, evening, whatever, whenever you're listening. All around Hi. world. Hi, I'm John. Good morning, Wolf, how are you doing? Good, yeah. hi. Quite up bright and early this morning to to do this, so hi. I've had, a, I've had a big coffee as well, so I'm fine. I, I've just nearly finished mine. We'll wait on this fucking idiot joining as well. Aye, we that, was, that was to be here for during the podcast, and I've just about tanned it. Well, I've got my cup of tea, but I'll be cool. I, I could have drank it while I was waiting to uh, to start. So I had some laptop battery admin issues before we started. Anyway, um, right, busy we show today. Um, Hibs 2, well, Hearts 2, Hibs 2. In the derby yesterday, Hibs coming from two goals behind, get an unlikely point or a point that looked unlikely at one point anyway. Um, John, we we had made a bit of a day of it, didn't we? We were at Malone's first and then joined the march along the tiny. What was your your thoughts on the day leading up to it? It was it was interesting. So I got a wee message off uh, Josh beforehand to say that uh, you were going to be in Malone's as well, and I had no idea that you were going to the game. To be honest. Uh, we, we managed to miss that coordination, so I was supposed to arrive and make it a big surprise, you know, for me. But um, I'd managed to watch, uh, miss Raymond on the way to uh, Malone's, and you were the first person I saw, so that was that plan, just fucking shot straight away. Um, <clears throat> but it was nice. Like a good surprise or a bad surprise would that have been, though? What, what kind of surprise would that have been? Oh, it was, it, was a, it was a lovely, pleasant surprise. Yeah. Uh, because I think, like, see, one of the things that I thought about, and there was a wee moment, and I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about it later on, where... And I think this is what makes all games really important. Uh, but maybe it's got like that wee bit extra edge, like in the, in in derbies or or like say cup games, for example, where you turn and you catch your mate's eye in the midst of a celebration, and it's fucking beautiful. It's 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 probably as close to shagging your mate and seeing their <laughs> their orgasm face as you can possibly get. <laughs> uh, the, the mad thing about that, John, is you and I got handed our tickets for the game. At exactly the same time. Mm. I'm not mentioning sure you know, where the tickets were from, right? But was oh, it the per- I got offered one during the week? Would I have been there if I could have made it as well? Is that the same? It would have been a three way call. I, I got a message during the week. Aye, 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 I couldn't go. Uh, I couldn't confirm it, so I couldn't take it for that reason. But it was an appreciated offer anyway. You know who you are. Aye, well, so, but, but John, I literally got handed the, the ticket at the exact same time as we were uh, waiting to go in. To hospitality, so it's remarkable that it was a surprise that I was mm. I was going to the game. Do you know? I, I'm. It's funny you say that because when we were handed the tickets and uh, I was given the the bill and I got sent the bank details and whatnot, I, I said later on to the, the person who gave us the tickets, um, "How much am I due?" You? And they said it's on the ticket, and like none of this like landed at any point in my brain with an action for me to carry out. It was standing. I, I've just, do you know what? I, I think I think people probably pick up on this from time to time, but I'm remarkably ignorant of events as they take place. Good, it's better. I think it's a good way to be, to be honest with you. Mm. Like it, it, it sort of preps you for all the the sort of memory issues you'll have in later life, doesn't it? So, do you know? I've I've actually wondered if I've got dementia for the for, for the time I was about fifteen. <laughs> so, so, are you saying that you forgot to pay, or that it was free? <clears throat> no, no, the, the the tickets weren't free. Um, yeah. I didn't. I, I, was, I, I, yeah. I got sent bank details to to pay ah, for the okay. tickets, and then yeah. I asked the guy how much yeah. he was due. Uh, okay. And of course, he was completely unhelpful because he said they're on the front of the ticket, and I forgot that I, I put them in my wallet. <laughs> I can I can imagine that response. Eh? That's kind of response I'd probably give. Uh, really helpful. Can. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> anyway, my lunch was was decent. We we uh, we went up the stairs when we first came in, and it was fucking jumping too loud for me and as an old man so we, we went down the stairs and found the table which suited me perfectly just being able to sit kind of quietly you could hear the, the noise up the stairs it sounded great we got to watch a wee bit of football and then picked a moment to go along and join the march that was uh, my first time in the march to uh, the Tain Castle John, you, you, had you done it before? No, I've, I've seen the pictures and the videos but um, usually being a wee bit 
early or I think maybe a wee bit late um, joining the queue and what have you but I think we managed to time it really really well because we came along for like you say Malone's came down that wee sort of zigzag path towards the the, the train bridge where most folk congregate and just got got in amongst it it's good. it was good and I saw like sort of the pictures and everything you had the folk with the balaclavas on and you know, almost to a man you couldn't tell who they were um, <laughs> there was good good effort there um, but it was that's a real there. That's a real, uh, really good review for the the balaclava makers, eh? <laughs> you've got a balaclava. Yeah, you've got no, a balaclava. No, I've got one. Have you? I had one when I was wee, and I used to get the piss ripped to me at school for it, like primary school. My mum was the only one that seemed like, oh, you need to keep... I don't know why my mum was the only one that made that seemed to think that I had to keep my face warm, but no other parents had this idea at primary school. They're just like, I fucked them, their face will freeze. I've never really I caught on. Like, you know, I was like, they, you know... Football and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, bank robbers like they're, they're not they're not well, as popular as it maybe should be, especially in like a cold climate like ours. You would think mm. they would be almost a necessity. I don't know. I, I, my granny got me one. Is a almost a joke. I think she was at the market with my. I think the market used to be. It was at a. Uh, was it East Fortune Market? Maybe it's mm-hmm. the market, right? But she was with my mum, like talking 20, 25 years ago. And she come home with a black lab, it probably cost a couple of quid. I mean, and it was just purely to say, put that on, that'll make you look better. That, that's, that's, I think, why she got me. And I've never, I've, I've kept it all this time. She's purely, my granny's obviously not around anymore. Like, I just, that makes me remind my granny. I had it out the other week because my daughter says, you got a ballet. That's what they call them now. I have got a ballet. But I was like, I was like, a ballet? What the fuck's a ballet? Why not a clover? I don't know. I came like, probably too lazy to, uh, Mad that you, uh, mad that you thought your, your granny was joking as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I'm taking for that. <laughs> um, so the march was good, impressed with that noise and colour and everything that you want to see. Is, uh, the photo was out on um, on Twitter and Instagram, and that all, all looked terrific. And you can see why there's the, the appeal of it anyway. A lot of smoke in it, really. Came with these uh, smoke bombs, so glad I had my scarf that they put up over oh, like my nose and mouth. Like, uh, it's like the old, the old I know when you're right next to it, though. Like, see, if, mm. it just, if it's literally in the hand of the person that's stood right in front of you and it's just coming straight in your face, that, that was a wee bit much for me. Um, that bit, the bit of coming straight in your face. <laughs> 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 it's the episode title, sorry, that. Um, <laughs> Okay. That'll not get on Hibs net, so I'll need to pick something different. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the, there was uh, the queue to get in, and I thought that was a fucking shambles. Like to, to actually get into the the stadium itself, because we sort of the cattle you in, uh, uh one big like sort of street before they let you into the bit where you do your the checks. So all that happens is literally like a handful of folk at a time, but. Everybody behind you starts to get more and more impatient, and it moves forward at such a slow pace. Like by the time we got to the front and they opened up to let folk through, there was like a big surge of folk trying to like push through because obviously it was mm-hmm. like get through this time. Uh, oh, it just wasn't a great experience that, but uh, and then they sort of they did a search, which isn't a search. They, they, they stand do that, they go tap 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 tap, like fuck off, do you go? Mm-hmm. Like, I got that. Stop anybody with anything. When I went through, like the wee sort of. The, the lanes if you like I jumped from one to the other because for whatever reason one of them in fact no it wasn't for whatever reason I jumped from one to the other because the guy was basically looking at you going all right and you go like it, I, I had a big jacket on and I don't know whether they thought oh he's just got a big coat on because I could have smuggled anything and I could have been, I could have had a tactical vest fully smoked bombs in there and he wouldn't have bought it an island at me or uh, stolen meat they ought to sell her into the like, <laughs> inside of your coat they want a steak <laughs> Jazzy Nice Cafe hooky DVDs <laughs> but it's a nightmare it's always a nightmare I've not been to Tin Castle since the last 2-2 win we got there um, <laughs> the last 2-2 win <laughs> the, the, um, but it's, it's always like that but they name one about when they come here and so the range and sell tickets it's, it's obviously a police and steward thing that they to, to like slow everybody getting in, it's a fucking nightmare. Everywhere, it's just football fans getting treated like shite, no matter what ground you're at. It's not a hearts thing, it's not a hips thing, it's just Aye, exactly. So, um, what the bit I didn't understand was one of the, the police because I got stopped like I was one of the the last people to get through, or one of the first people to get through, depending on your point of view. And I heard one of the, the police guys saying, Hibs agreed to this, and I saw that there was a, a Hibs representative, and I don't know what his name was, but um, 
uh, shout out to him because he, he spoke to me for a couple of minutes about the organisation of it. And he said that Hibs were supposed to have been provided with some sort of diagram or plans that they presumably could have communicated to the supporters. I don't know how much difference that would have made because, like, from our point of view, like, we were in that, like, we were there at, like, two o'clock queuing mm. to get in. And that seems an absurdly early time to be there, to be held up. And I mm. think that adds to the frustration, but also think that there's a, a certain element that's out with even the, the police hands from an organisational point of view or Hibs hands um, from being communicated information by whoever it was. And it all relates to the lack of turnstiles and the, the, the building of the, the away end, of, of mm. how away fans get into the ground. It's just the whole thing is stupid. And I don't know whether, um, I don't know how much Harps can do in terms of having like a proper, say, like even if you were to move the turnstiles further forward so that you still have that sort of um, staggered entry into the ground, but it's just a wee bit further away. I don't know. Don't know how they would because it, it takes away, because the, the, I find I find I found it quite intimidating that you have, I think there was four police horses mm-hmm. and you have a whole line of police and they've got like the, they've got the sort of like the padded gloves and they've got whatever else it is that they're wearing. There's a buddy field marshal behind them when he's telling them to like join join up and you know break the corner or whatever he's got like the big moustache going on like there's a very real militaristic um feel to it and it's just it, it, I, like i say i find it really intimidating but pretty chill about it but i'm thinking like this is just the, the entirely wrong way to go about it to try and get fans into the ground i'm amazed he's with it at two o'clock like i thought he was going to say <laughs> it was like half two quarter to three you know when it gets nope. busier but when you say two it's but, but anyway I suppose we were going to talk about the game, but what, what was the traffic like? Um, <laughs> no, no bother, because I thought it was pissing, and I got, I, I thought I'd left it late. So we were meeting at half 11 in Malone's, and I thought I'd left it late to uh, to leave Dunfermline, uh, but I actually made it in like, perfect time. Uh, traffic was, was great, oh, actually. Good. Uh, I so it, oh, it, it was on this side, the town didn't really have to venture into Edinburgh properly, so... Um, and maybe right. staff don't have to go in that with that as well. Yeah, Aye, yeah, really. That helps. Aye. Once you go past the dinghies and that that we're kind of kicking about. <laughs> yeah. Um right, game itself, we we made a couple of changes. Montgomery made a couple of changes to the lineup. Hamlin dropped out for um Rocky and the other change was up front. Um, beat no coming for Stevenson. Did it beat a no start or against Dundee? Did they? I think he did. Sure. I think he started against Dundee. Uh, yeah. But Deutsch came in for LaFondre at the start of the game as well. I think, I think those were the only two changes, with the caveat being uh, I never checked and Stevenson will beat a one. Uh, start line up, Colin, what did you think? Um, I, I was a wee bit, I would have been more comfortable, I think, with um, Hanlon mm-hmm. starting. And, and I think I'd said last week, Stevenson as well, although I do like Obita. And and I think you may be talking around at the time saying Obita's Mira, we're going to win it. Stevenson's a we're trying to head on to it. Than a, the, 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 the other way around. So so I could so I wasn't too thing with that one, but I would have preferred Hanlon over Rocky, although in the end Rocky was mm. Rocky was fine. Um and I do like LaFondre, so as was as was proven, I think, when he when he came on. Uh, it team seemed to be better when he was on, but um Aye, other than that, it was, it was not really much than what you expect. There's only one or two changes now that can happen. Eh? Like it's no like previous management, no, not just the previous, not no directly previous one, but over the over the time, even even when Lennon was here, he'd gone to a derby, not really knowing how many defenders and and top players he was going to play at, at Tyne Castle. So it was actually it, you kind of going into it knowing that that's the formation. He might change Hanlon or Rocky or Stevenson or Beat or or Lafondre or Doyle. That, that's really odd. It's really going to yeah. change. Uh, John, do you think that the fact that he stuck with a four four two, stuck with the more you know almost the same team as as played against Dundee, do you think that's how it phrase this question? Like, did it show Montgomery's got that belief in the system to say that this is you know making sure talks about him having an identity? This is him saying this is our identity, so it doesn't matter where we go, this is what we're going to play. Or would you have it's like hoped he would have changed it to to suit the occasion? No, I didn't want him to change it. I think from the time of his appointment to today, he's he's played that four four two, and there's been some of the the small tweaks and changes that Collins described in terms of personnel. I wanted him to approach yesterday's game the way that he's approached other games, which is this is how we play. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I think that's something that we've been looking for uh, from previous managers as well, because as Colin says, like even you know the the so called Neil Lennon quotes the born winner. Um, even he went to Tyne Castle and changed it, and it seemed to play into the opposition hands and, and weakened us. So I wanted us to go out there the way that Montgomery wants to play, and and I think we got that. It would be fair to say I think that it didn't really work initially. Like we we struggled no. to get a proper foothold in the in the game. I thought maybe like the first maybe ten minutes the game was pretty even, but then Hart sort of took a foothold in the game and, and had us pinned back. Um, what do you think was behind that, Colin? I, I felt we were a man down in the middle, mm-hmm. uh, like in, in the middle of the park, and that. And there was a bit of debate, and uh, I don't know if you've been there, probably seen the group chat, and I was under the on it because how I was watching the game um, was obviously behind real life. Um, so about getting Campbell in, but then there was Levitt as well that, that I kind of forgot about till he came on, actually, right? But uh, I think I think we needed that. I would have been tempted to have maybe taken a striker off and put a midfielder in because one of the strikers does kind of drop in there anyway, and I would have maybe preferred that. Campbell in there to, to do a bit of running about and maybe closed in the guy Lowry who mm. did seem pretty decent um, and then the goal John came from uh, running back Forest Forrest, uh, Forrest. Um, the goal um, it's, it's fair to say that it was a, a good, I was trying to look at from a defensive point of view I think we probably could have done more to stop him getting the ball but once they got in the ball I think Obita was challenging. Probably hasn't done much wrong with showing him inside on his weaker foot. That's probably where you want him. <clears throat> you got any complaints about the, the, the defending? I don't know about complaints, more observations, because I think when where the the attack starts is down our left, down the right hand side. And it seemed like Yuan and Abita almost started trying to track the same man. Down the outside, and of course, like Forrest has cut inside, and he's he's hit a bit of wonder strike, um, and it just seemed. And I think I think that was similar to a chance earlier in the first half where uh, when Lowry hits the the post, because I think Bushiri kind of like gets pulled out of position and almost tries to uh, dive in a little bit to try and nick the ball away, but then finds himself out of position. Lowry kind of runs in, hits the shot, comes off the left hand post. So it was almost like we got caught ball watching on a couple of occasions, and that's cost us. Or almost cost us once and almost cost us on another occasion. I, I didn't think anybody really went to him. Like, you know, he did show him inside, but he didn't really get very close to him. And I thought, I think, Johan maybe came back as well and it looked like there was a fraction of a second of hesitation that um, Obita was almost saying, <clears throat> I'll, I'll go. You know, like it was, yep. are, you, are you got to go with him or am I got to go with him? And it was, and I'm talking fraction of a second, but that, that's what he needed, yeah. You know I, mean? I think that um, was I think that was similar. Uh, I want to say was it early second half when they got the second, where there was a moment's hesitation for Yuan that allows Lowry to drive into the box and hit a shot, kind of unchallenged. And it is it is those those split seconds that any team makes a difference. Hey, this yeah, on. I, I will come on to the, the the second, but I didn't even think Lowry's shot. But that one I watched it last no, night. Just, just try to play it into the into the middle with the. the the crowd of players are text that shit ball. Now he goes the fucking he goes away and makes it like he fucking scored. Because I was like, how the fuck did he do that? And then I watched the back, I was like, he never fucking done it. I think I, I was I was confused at the time because it certainly looked for the other end of the pitch that it, that it had taken a deflection. Of course, the, the stadium announcer's crediting it to Lowry, but obviously subsequently uh, it's been credited as a doy jungle. Naismith uh, hooked him because he was embarrassed for him, apparently. <laughs> That was the reason. Um, I thought after they went ahead, we started to, to play a bit more and got into it. And by the end of the first half, we were maybe not on top, but we were certainly causing them some issues. And Colin, I'll, I'll need to come to you for this one. We had a, a penalty far review. In fact, Hearts before that, Hearts had a penalty far review before they scored, which I think mm-hmm. the boys dived. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, he's looking for it all the way. It's one of the ones that you go in if the goalie. Uh, 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 that's a funny one. Um, that would be right in front of you, say, but uh, the, the, mm-hmm. or at your end certainly. But he, he did. I think Marshall touched him. Like he was waiting on him, touching him. But I, then they got a corner for it, and I thought he kept it because he he won the ball. He got to the ball first, right? Aye. Which is the whole thing. You get to the ball first and fall down. 
and you get a penalty. That's the unofficial uh, rule. And and they got a corner. And I thought Marshall never touched it. Maybe that's why he never gave the penalty. But then it got VR checked, didn't it? So, mm-hmm. so I and VAR VAR will not overturn the corner, which is stupid. No. Like I always think, that is mad. Like, eh? You've got these things where it's like VAR will not get involved for, uh, like deciding as a corner or a goal kick. But you think surely if they're looking at the incident for, is it a penalty? Or is it no? And they go, oh, that should be a goal kick. It's all right for them to say, well, we've checked that. That should be a goal kick. And then if because you're just right. putting them straight under pressure, and and then you could possibly have booked him for, for the dive, for the dive because it is a dive. It's one of the ones he's anticipating the the goal he's touched. But Marshall seen it coming, didn't he? Yeah. Um, um, it's frustrating that, and I, I get that's of our rule, but you just think that it doesn't make sense that it's picking if, and choosing. Eh? It's I, mental. If they're looking at an incident anyway, and they see an obvious error, it's all part of the same incident. It's not like you're saying, I, oh, but a minute ago he it, it was. Uh, they would do it if it was offside, going for it. So, like, why would they not say it on the on the other side? Well, it's not corner. Aye. They would say, well, it's not a penalty. Even if it was a penalty, say Marshall had clipped him, they would have meant maybe it was offside. Aye. Right, so, why would they know then check and say, well, it's not corner? Aye. It's, it's like, it's mental. Like, the it's like, that let, let's get the whole bit of this right. We've got Aye. an opportunity to get the whole bit of it right rather than just part of it. Anyway, uh, I think... It's hard to tell for us, like, uh, for, for the end people, because it's down the other end. The, they went out for a corner, next thing is a bar review for a handball. Going by the WhatsApp, it sounds like it should have been a penalty. What, what was your thoughts on the call? I eventually got an angle that looked like a penalty. Now, if the VAR had the same angles that the one I was watching had, I can see how they couldn't give it, like, because I was showing the angles. It was like, you ever watch rugby, right? Okay, you might know. But somebody goes over the try line and everybody piles around it, and the referee yeah. goes, I can't fucking see anything. Right, it was like that. There was angles for behind all the players, and you're like, there must be a camera, and that's it. It's got to be. Anyway, they eventually got rid of it, and it was like two hands he touched it with. Right. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it was near a penalty. And when it went to VAR, I was like, I was checking the, the group chat because I can't. That's ahead of what I'm watching. <laughs> So I kind of knew it wasn't going to be given, but I'm like, well, he's ready to be yeah, he's standing with his hand in his ear, but obviously by then I'm going, somebody's talking about being a corner. I'm like, fuck's sake, how is that not given? Like, if, if you're going and checking, and he never got sent to the screen. Yeah. I, I Why would was, you not send him to the screen? Is that not the point? Is that I what thought, he do? I thought that was weird, because I, th- I think if it's like, uh, if it comes to, I suppose they're looking for a clear and obvious error for the referee when they go to review, but again, it's the same thing. If they're going, if it's handball, it normally comes down to the referee's judgment. You can't have the yeah. bar going, right, I will decide in... Ah, it's not the referee's judgment then, is Aye. it? They, they should be sending them to the screen for it, but, uh, you know, that's never happened and we never got the penalty. And I got to half time, 1-0 down. Um, going by the post-match reports, it sounded like Montgomery went through the players at, at half time. Mm. Uh, John, you think he was right to do that? Probably, I think there was. Uh, I think there was maybe a couple of players. I wouldn't want to sing them out, especially. But there was definitely improved performances second half that you didn't see first half, and there was a couple of mistakes that we made first half, like one of them that I mentioned that we that I don't think we really made second half. So whatever the whatever the game plan, whatever the approach was, there was a there was a marked difference second half. So like I think about. We've talked about it before, where the the keeper goes to take the by kick or whatever, um, uh, the goal kick, sorry, mm-hmm. and you know we bring the the centre halves you know closer in to take a pass or whatever. I don't remember seeing much of that first half, but definitely saw more of it second half, and it and it was uh, a marked different second half because I think when we started doing that, when we started knocking the ball about, I thought we looked much much better. First half, I think we maybe maybe try to hit them on the counter attack, but. Maybe it wasn't the best idea in the conditions because I think it played into their hands because we couldn't properly capitalise on the counter-attack, which gave them the ball back and it just immediately put us back under pressure. Would you have made any changes at halftime? I did ask around um, the the people that was there, and it was funny that you were talking about putting an extra man in midfield, column because I, I felt that way towards the end of the second half because there was uh, quite a few loose balls in midfield. Um, that we weren't able to uh, uh, pick up on, which I think... Second. I, I, was, I was at this stage, sorry John, but I didn't ask the question, I'm now rambling over you. Answer it. I, I'm not going to answer it, it was more that <laughs> I was watching that first half going, here we fucking go again. 
was the first goal at Tyne Castle. We keep saying, oh, every fucking ball bounces to them. Can all that mm-hmm. chat that we go over uh, and over and over, especially when we went 2 0 I'm going, same old fucking story. Like, and that's exactly where I was. And, and, and it was like, again, because we were sitting in the house and it was like, oh, every second ball's got to them and that. And you go, that can't be like luck. Luck. That, 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 there's a reason for that and it, it seems to always happen to us over there. Yeah. No, but that, that was what it felt like, you know. Yeah, absolutely. That was because I'd asked uh, Raymond and I think I'd asked uh, uh, the few folk next to me as well, just like, what change would you make right now, if any? And I think the one change that uh, Raymond had mentioned was Dodge to uh, Dodge for the Fondry, uh, purely because it would... It should, in theory, stop us hitting long balls. And this isn't a, a criticism of Dodge per se. It's just that it was an easy out, and it forced <laughs> players not to try and play the ball. There was other instances in the first half where I think uh, Boyle was on the counter attack, and he's he's not been able to kind of get down the line. So he's turned back and he's played it to a beater. And rather than I was looking for a beater there to maybe like drive and field and try and find another pass to try and move the play forward again, and he's just dinked something forward. And I thought it was a bit lazy and I think it was probably reflective of that first half like not not having a bit of bravery and possession not having that the imagination either um, and that, that, that's probably why I was maybe thinking about changes for the second half because we were already 1-0 down at that point you're looking for something to get you back in the game and based on what we'd seen in the first half up to that point it didn't look like we were going to get back in the game What, what I liked about the half time chat um, and the fact that it didn't make changes was that it was like, the, I go back to what we said at the start about that belief in the system. And what he said to the players is, you certainly did what we do all the time. Like, mm. what, it, it's mental. If I, if I liken it to when I had my, like, go back years and years and years, right, passing my driving test. Right? So I failed my driving test twice. Third time I went to do it, it was a different instructor that took us out. Uh, but like in the pre-test thing, obviously I'm nervous. And my driving was shite. And they fucking shouted at me. He's like, the fuck are you doing? He said, "That's you, you've had like." He's like, "You came what you doing? Why, why are you driving like that?" And I was like, "Oh fuck, right." And then all of a sudden, it was like, "I, I, I came what I'm doing." And then I was like, "I was better at driving." And it reminded me of that is it's like the manager coming and just saying like, "Why are you playing like that?" Like, that's not what we do. That's no how we've trained and everything. And they came at the second half, no changes, same team, same formation, better performance. And I just thought it was like really good that he went in and backed it. It didn't go. Fucking hell! I need to rip this up and start again. As we've seen with mm-hmm. with previous managers, he was like, "No, we we can do it. We just need to be better at, at what we're doing." And we were. Yeah. I, Told I you, thought, to get his finger at his ass as well. I think he actually said that. He did. Uh, both of them said that. And it's good. I think it was good. Yuan's reaction as well. Like you saw him uh, get interviewed by the the BBC, and he said he said the same thing. He's like, "The manager told me ten minutes to get the sort it out." So mm-hmm. sort of out pretty much. Um, I thought we were unlucky with, with that second goal. Like we, we should have defended the corner better, but it's just a swipe for Dodge, isn't it? It's just fucking flew in. It's like just a typical really... Dodge goal, isn't it? I... <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> um, and, and then the subs happened, right? So we took off Dodge and put on uh, LaFondre, and Hearts took off uh, Lowry and put on. Me. Is that his name? Yeah, that's him. Was, uh, I think LaFondry was coming, looked like he was maybe coming on anyway before the corner. I don't Aye. think it was off uh, due to the goal. No, no, no. Um, I think he was he was planning to come on, but the, I thought the game totally swung at that point. Like from although we were playing better in the game, it swung it in our favour, and then it wasn't that long after that that we get back in the uh, in, in the game. So it comes down our left-hand side, Colin, what do you think of the first goal? Talk us through it. Fucking hell, what was the first goal again? Um, left-hand side, oh aye, there was a couple of passes, uh, a, a couple of wee, 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 uh, triangles and that, and then it broke to, well, it went through Bemingway, was it Bemingway's legs? Is that right? It bounced, or was it the Sims, boy? I think. Sir, no, Civic. Civic, Civic Kai, that's him. Went through his legs and kind of bounced it for you to just smash it into the top of the, the net. It was, uh, the BBC analysis said it was, uh, there was a shite clearance for the sub. And Mikey Stewart was basically saying, he's had about five or six sprints there. 
try to get involved in the game. And by the time the ball came to him, he had the jelly legs and he couldn't clear it. That was and he, he's just came on, man. Can they do the five or six fucking sprints? Fuck sake, can I get the five or fucking six sprints? They'd be fucked, but I could still kick a ball after that. Aye, looks like that good. No, but it was, it was only be sprints. It wasn't like up, didn't it? it wasn't like fucking hundred meter sprints or, yeah. or eight meters however long that pitch is. Can it, it was actually fucking um like well, five, ten yard sprints, eh? Aye. Like come on, like give an um, excuse like that. Some finish for you and John. Oh, I loved it. I love Colin's description there. Uh how he just smashed into the roof of the net. And I wonder how much that rippled through the hip support because it wasn't like it wasn't you, Annie. He didn't try to be clever. He didn't try to find the corner. He didn't try to beat the keeper. Didn't do anything like that. He just fucking leathered it. And Clark had no chance. And uh, and it's it's rare, I think, that you find uh, a goal like that where it just could, like you say, like hits through for the net, like dead center, pretty much. Um, he just, uh, he just, he just smashed it. Uh, like there's no. There's no clever way to describe that, and it and it it got me going, but, and right. I just wonder what it was like for everyone else. And I think at that point, because we were two one down, it didn't feel like a consolation goal, but I certainly never celebrated it like I did his second. Aye, I, I don't know what uh, I don't know what French for fuckle is, but I, I expect that's what he said when he la it fuckle. It, la well, I don't know if it's the masculine or feminine. Is it la or is it la la, la fuckle? La, I think like, I like that. <laughs> la fuckle. <laughs> um. I, I, but we were still pretty much bouncing around for, uh, for scoring that one. And I agree with you, John, it didn't feel like that. But I never felt we were totally out of the game. See what I meant to now? I was like, we're going to, I felt like we were going to get beat. <clears> but I didn't feel that, like it was totally beyond us. You, you, you kind of sense it could go one or two ways. Like we, we could keep it 2 now, is what I thought would happen. I'll finish 2 now, Or the players will, fact, the will fall out the players completely and we'll go and lose. Kind of like a four or whatever, just like as we are prone to do against them uh, from, from time to time. But I, I just didn't think it was going to go that way. I, th- I thought we looked enough in the game that we still had a bit of a chance. I I would compare and contrast that with the game at New Year where Fish had his mistake and Yuan was through one on one and didn't pull the trigger. Like, didn't have a shot and he got uh, someone got back and managed to get the clearance in. That day, I thought the Hibs were only getting back into it. So I left, I think maybe at half time, went, ah, oh, fuck this, I'm done. I'm going home. I've got other stuff I could be doing. Um, stuck around yesterday because, like you say, at no point did I think the Hibs were out of it. And despite the the first half performance and probably deserving to be one 0 down overall, there were still some good moments within it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that you got to see more of that second half where we, like you say, like the the halftime team talk. It was you know there was no changes, there was no ripping it up. It was like you know Montgomery saying basically I believe in you, but there's going to be some changes if you you know if you didn't buck your ideas up kind of thing. Uh, Colin then. 83 seconds later, we're level. Mm. Um, would you get the second goal? Well, again, this boy Civic is fucking shite, is what I think. Because it was, I, I don't know what he's doing. It's like, it's like total lack of a left foot, and he's stuck a right foot out. It's fucking schoolboy stuff, like defending. And Yuan kept his run going, which was good, because he could have, could have switched off and came on. It's an easy clearance, because it was an easy clearance. Um, but he just picked up. It was, a, it was a really nice finish on that one as well. Um, that that was the celebrations in the house were a wee bit different to the first one as well. Uh, just because it was like it was like a. I was there in twenty sixteen when we done it at, at Tyne Castle, and the goals were a lot further apart, of course. But when the first one went in, you got the belief. I, I still didn't quite get the. Yesterday I didn't. I thought ah, oh, two one they'll go and win three one or something. Like I, n- I never thought that, but uh-huh. that was I think what I was feeling. Um, but to get them rapid like that, I was thinking maybe we're going to fucking win it. Like, because it was still, must have been 20 odd minutes to go still. I can't remember the time we scored on it. Um, aye, so it was a shit bit of defending again. Uh, so he's, the boys went through his leg for one and bounced off his heel for the first one. The second one, he stuck his right ankle loop to, to clear it when he should have just swiped it away with his left. Um, so putting it firmly on uh, his shoulders for me, like, if, 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 if they were hips goals, I'd be wanting him out. Like, Aye, you would be hammer on for him. Imagine if that was handling a rocky. Aye. like we would be absolutely panning that cunt on on uh, on here and on Twitter, or no, not just us, Hibs fans. Everybody, hi. Because it was terrible defending. And uh, you sort of Venti, Venti could have played the ball as well, but he sort of almost shielded it a bit for uh, for for you and just like fucking just go put it away. 
Uh, John Cracken finish again for you, Am? Aye, and I think uh, it's one of those ones where because of the way the Roseburn's pretty steep in that and you're looking down on it, it was you're kind of like where we were, sort of like middle of the stand above the goals and that, you're kind of like looking over a sea of heads. And it's just because you've just kind of got over and over the, let's say, muted celebrations of the first one. The ball sort of breaks in the middle of the box. And I can't remember whether it was before or after. But do you remember that there was a, a shot in the box and Lafondre's running across and he actually boxed it? Aye. And you wonder... <laughs> Is this going to be, is this how it's going to pan out? Is this going to be our day? So I don't know that I was expecting much. And again, like I didn't, I don't think I appreciate just how much space and time you and had, and and the run, the the continued run that Collins described. But he just sort of stepped on it and slotted it uh, bottom corner, and it was a beautiful finish. And then orgasmic faces uh, how, at how, making eye how contact. Do, how do you describe those scenes at the the, the second goal? <clears throat> I don't think pandemonium does it justice. Like. Uh, like you're, like I say, you're in amongst your mates. There's folk that you've maybe just met on the day. Everyone's fucking embracing. Everyone's jumping up and down. I make eye contact. Bodies are coming in at me from behind. I, I never broke a chair, but a chair did get broken in the, the celebrations. And uh, someone's jumped on my feet. And I'm thinking, oh fuck, I broke my toes. Like they were throbbing for a good bit afterwards. And it was just, and you go, ah oh, fuck it, like that was fucking amazing. I had to catch Josh. Josh was away just about to fog in the row in front. I'd managed to catch him just in uh, just in time, but it was uh, it was fucking good. Like it was amazing. Like I was like I made a comment on Twitter uh, last night. Is you imagine for like the Hearts perspective, you're fucking bouncing. Do you know like you're uh, they've got the the three stands singing, they're fucking lording up, and then eighty three seconds later, you're like what the fuck's happened? We just yep. decide not to sing again for the rest of the game. It totally demoralises you, though, doesn't it? Aye. And that's how I would elect us to go on and win, like because they're they're like because it's such a sickener. Mm-hmm. Like we've been there two 0 up to back to two two, and it totally deflates you, doesn't it? It's like so it's a shit feeling. And we, we did have some some chances. So Levitt came on for uh, Jago, Marshall got injured, and uh, uh, Boric had to come on. Um, Newell and Boyle both had chances towards the end. John, the could potentially have won it. Do you, do you think either should have done better with the the chances? Maybe. I try and... I mean, you would have obviously liked them to score. I think their opportunity to score, like from, from my perspective, looking down on it, it looked like it was a, a narrow angle that they had to hit. I think... I don't know if Newell's hit his on his left. No. Um, has he hit it on his left? Mm-hmm. And I just had a... Isn't he hit him on his right? He, he usually right. he never does, but he, he did actually hit that one on his left, and it, and it was right to hit on his left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Um, so I, I, I mean, I think because he had that almost jink and run into the box, where he's kind of glided into the box and he's he's beat a few players, and that I thought, oh, this is the moment, especially because we had momentum. It wasn't too long from recollection after you and equaliser, and I thought this could be the third, and I, I was like, fuck, I'm not sure if my feet and my toes are prepared for this. Mm-hmm. Like if I thought they were broke before, they're definitely going to get broke now. Um. And Boyle, it was, I think it was all to do with the angles. Like it was quite narrow angles for recollection to to have. He hesitated. He hesitated. It was on his left foot, and he hesitated. As was was it Boyle as well, or are you talking about Newell? The Boyle yeah, one. Boyle. Yeah, it, and it should have been a corner, but he should have got the shot away. But I think he hesitated because it was on his wrong foot, and that yeah. fucking frustrates the life at me. And I was I kind of touched into the Newell. It was on his left foot, but he'll not hit one with his right, boy will not hit one with his left. You know, it's yeah. unless you really, really have to. And it's like, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like that. But I think he could have got a shot away earlier than he did, personally. Um, but it should have been a corner, and we didn't Aye. get that. Um, and so we finished to each hearts with a couple of chances. Well, okay, they went off the bar. Uh, I think Newell deflects up onto the bar. Um, I thought Boric but- had saved that first. So Aye, that, I thought it was a really good is, thing. Like, it wasn't far away. I think he possibly had it covered if it was going in. And uh, ah, so it petered out to a two-two one. As uh, as you said, Paul. <laughs> Mental that Marshall took that goal kick when he was clearly struggling. I thought, like, like right, I'll just take this and just totally destroy McCa- eh, McGroin or Thigh or whatever it was he's pulled. Mad you decision think, making, eh? We, we knew, like, he's limping about. I thought he was coming off then. But then I'll take the free kick, goal kick, whatever it was. Well, why are you taking it? Like, yeah. And then he kicks it and goes, now nah, I'm fucked. Like, 
Yeah. I think it was pride and you know seeing how it's how it's going to pan out, see how bad he's really injured. Like in that situation, yeah. like if you're Marshall and you're feeling it, how much a risk do you take? How much a risk do you, does your manager want you to take in that situation? Because it does force you into a change that you would otherwise probably not make that might have otherwise influenced the game. I think this is um like if if you've been kind of maybe it's, it speaks to the character of Marshall that doesn't want to go off. Do you know, like obviously as a senior player, it's a big game when you've got a, the alternative as a young laddie coming on and you're like like it's you'd you try to stay on as long as you could. You know, mm. if you're like, like I could probably get away with this, right? Like you say then if you if you're if you're borderline, then you take the kicks. Like that's just that's the mental yeah. bit about it. It is like you it's good for him for what to play on. But just nurse it if, if that's what you need to do, just nurse that's it. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Would the conversation that we're having just now be different if because of Marshall's injury, as much as you're saying like talking about nursing it and having other players take the goal kick, what if his groin impacted on his ability to make a save, for instance? I so, so it's the same. He has to make that judgment, isn't it? Doesn't he? Like if he, yeah. if he thought he was alright for it, and Drew he might have been called into action for it. Like I try to think how many saves Boric had to make. I think other than the one that rattled the bar, I think if he actually saved. He it, stuck a leg out one. There was right. a one came across and he stuck a leg out and it went uh, fire and sort of back out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe Marshall wouldn't have been able to do that, John, if his if his mm. groin is gone. Um, I suppose it's all hypotheticals, isn't it? But yeah. uh, Boris did fine when he came on. Uh, what about Levitt? Uh, we've been talking about him and how he fits into the the team uh, before. The last time we saw him was against Lucerne, where he was did well beside Joe Newell. What, what do you think of him when he came on, John? I thought he did well. I think uh, I'm probably surprised to see him back as early as he as he is because the the injury that he got against Lucerne looked serious. Like I remember saying at the time that like, everyone in the the Albion went, like, you know, that's a badging. But um, I think the reports afterwards were saying that it wasn't as bad as it looked. Um, and when he came on, it gives, I think it creates a bit of a problem for Montgomery because I thought Jekyll had a, a decent game yesterday. Um, I think there was a comment about double pivots and I actually had a read of uh, the Coach's Voice website that explained the double pivot and I think it basically comes down to two versatile central midfielders that'll sit in, that'll cover full backs, that'll support the attack, all that sort of stuff. And I thought Jago did most of that from a, a defensive point of view. I thought Levitt was keen to get forward yesterday and I thought he put in a couple of important challenges in the middle of the park when, I think as we described earlier, like there was some loose balls in midfield. Um, I think his introduction was an indication for Montgomery that he was looking to go and try and win the game. I think maybe perhaps Newell was fucked by that point. I think there was a few players like Venti in particular, like towards the end of the game, he looked like, you know, when Mikey Short was talking about jelly legs and what have you, Venti yeah. genuinely just about couldn't stand towards the end of the game. Like he had nothing left in his legs. And and to be fair, I'm like, I, I've not been critical in the past. Oh, sorry. I've not been critical of Venti in the past. I haven't appreciated the amount of running and effort and support that he puts in for the rest of the team. So, uh, big shout out for uh, for him. But I know I thought I thought Levy did fine, and I think he's going to be a real asset for Hibs in the, the coming weeks and months, as inevitably injury suspensions or what or whatever come into effect. Uh, I like to look at him. Great. Um, so, in, in the end, so overall summary, call we're happy with the point. I would to take the point before it because I think as uh, you tweeted last night, or Montgomery said. Um, we did. We knew we weren't going to lose. I think, and we spoke about it on our episode. We done a whole episode last year, or sorry, this year, earlier this year. Didn't lose derbies. And what was that stat that got posted in the last 22, 22 was it derbies? Twenty two being the magic number right. uh, for some reason. That um, we've, we've basically tied. We've got a tied record in, in the derby of a house. Aye. Oh yeah, yeah, aye. Was and, it and six, six victories each, 10, 10 draws or something? Aye, that was Kenny, Kenny Murphy. It, it, it was a good, good start. Just, uh, I always I assume it's them, correct. I've not fact-checked it, but right, like, yeah. assuming it's correct, because you'll hear them talking about derbies as if, like, and they'll dismiss us. I mean, we're, we're equal. Like, over the last, what, four, five seasons, whatever that is. Aye, that works that. Um, so, so over the last five seasons, we're equal. Um, and and yet, we're, we're the ones that... that are made to feel or feel uh, inferior in that we're, we're clearly not and we didn't lose it and I think that's important and that's us uh, three in a row 
and, and marching on. Marching on. John, what were you doing? The, 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 it was at a point, it felt like a point or a point, it felt like a, a, a three pointer. Ah, it's, it's interesting because uh, when you watch the, the post match interviews, they're very, very different for both managers. Mm. And, and I know that there's probably an element of bias, but I, I thought that Montgomery's interview was better. Um, I thought Naismith was very much party line. We were the bigger team. We lost the game rather than you know us gaining a point. Um, I think we had uh, an extra time episode. I think it must have been four games ago now, where we talked about the next six and you know points and you know what we were looking to get out of it, that kind of thing. And I think Touchwood, like the four games that we've had so far, like I think it's a real sign of us going in the the right direction. So I'd say it was a valuable point. I don't think I didn't come away feel, like I definitely came away feeling pretty elated because at two 0 down you're thinking that's the game sewn up because I think as we've demonstrated in the past generally speaking the team that scores first either goes on to win the game or sees out the game teams don't often come back at it from from two 0 down so we've done that so felt pretty good about it but I would have wanted more but not disappointed. Uh, Montgomery mentioned a stat I think he said it would be three years and seven months or something since Hibs had come back from two goals down to take in for a game. Which is mental. Um, and and t- touching on what you said, Colin, uh, if the roles had been reversed yesterday, we'd been 2 nothing up at Tiny and the game finished 2 2. All of us, right, there'll not be a Hibs fan that you'd find it, I think, that wouldn't be saying that's just what Hearts stand are, because like, they always find a way. It means more to them. Uh, it's mm-hmm. like, do you know, even if they're playing shit, they'll dig out a result for, uh, for somewhere. And we would yeah. talk about how like the Derby means more and, and all this, like they put more into it. But we did it yesterday, so we need to apply that same thinking to us and, and recognise that that's a team that, that made sure they didn't lose uh, yesterday. And as Yuan, it was Yuan that, that, uh, that I was quoting, he says that we knew we weren't going to lose, um, which is good. Anyway, right, let's uh, get on to the talking points and we'll, we'll get wrapped up for the episode. So, uh, first one is from Keith Robertson, who said it was much better in the second half. Monty gave the team a rocket and got his subs right. Good to see Boric get a stint. Hopefully Marshall's okay. Uh, shame not to get the win, but a draw is a good result as Hearts squandered a two-goal lead. Plus, their manager stays in the job a little longer. Um, Colin, that, that point about Naismith staying in the job a little longer, good news for us? It is good news, but you know, the thing is, because it feels like a defeat for them, it, it might damage them more. Like, see if it just been now, now, that it would have probably, it would have probably been alright for them, but because it's like a 2-0 up, it just feels like a loss, doesn't it? No matter, no matter who, who it happens against. So, so it might have been a maybe a bit of black mark against them. And, and I think because the, the turning point really was his substitution. Mm-hmm. But we were allowed; it was causing us all sorts of trouble. And yeah, it does look like that. And it, but yeah, it was funny. It was funny because uh, he actually um, almost criticised them in his post-match Aye. interview. It was almost like he wasn't happy with what he had done. What did he yeah. say in his post-match interview? Because I've, I've, I've tried to find these comments about Larry. Because I, I I thought when he took him off, I thought that it was going to play. I thought it could play into our hands because, as you said, like he was, he was definitely causing us problems. He's had the shot off the the post. He's had the deflected goal, and he just seemed to be in different areas of the pitch, influencing play. So to take him off at sixty minutes, I don't know whether Naismith was thinking. Right, was now we need to. Was that it? And he's and criticised his decision making. Decision making, yeah. And he made quite a lot about that. I wonder um, whether he was trying to maybe introduce someone different to try and uh, see out the game. But it was a long time to go because I think it was on the 60th minute. And then, of course, like we scored within about two minutes of coming off, which just nullifies that. We're fucking good eh? um, <laughs> <laughs> Thomas McVeigh said uh, Naismith bottled it and tried to sit in, but it backfired. Hope to keep him because he's absolutely pish. Yep, see above. Um, Paul said, I think today uh, epitomises the other Yuan his tremendous ability but lacks the professional quality to take him to the next level as a footballer. Turned up when it mattered though. He seems to have that in his locker. The rest could be easy. Um, Yuan was getting a lot of stick around us. Like, and a lot of folk were, were saying that they would have hooked him at mm-hmm. half time, if not before. Crazy, eh? How things go. That's funny. Are... But that's what he's like, though, eh? He's a frustrating individual. I think there was a comment, Leon of Longbangers, uh, he was saying that... I, I forget exactly. Yet. Not yet. We've not been requesting yet. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, Leon had tweeted something about 
uh, Leon being. Uh, sorry, not Leon, not Bill. He wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about Who Yuan are you talking about, John? Of... Who are you talking about? Uh, is it Leon or Leon? <laughs> what, what, is it Leon? Is it Leon? Is it Yuan? Is it Yuan? I... Talking about Yuan being one of the most skillful, and it will be frustrating because he's very positive. He's trying to make things happen, and I never really considered that before. Like Sometimes I think that what Yuan is trying to do, like he maybe delays something or he, he tries to beat a man or whatever, he's just trying to overcomplicate the game. But I actually kind of looked at it in a different, uh, for a different, looked at Yuan's performance through a different lens after seeing that comment. But he, like he, he, like things sometimes just things didn't happen for him, and I wonder if sometimes there can be a bit of a, a perception problem with players. Like sometimes there's a, a flavour of the month thing. So I wasn't particularly impressed with uh, Miller and Obita yesterday. Uh, Miller wasn't able to beat a man going forward. Couldn't get a ball into the box. Uh, I thought Obita at times also had the same difficulty. But Stevenson, for instance, gets gets <coughs> sick for that, and I think. When something doesn't come off for a player, especially when you're 1-0 down or if you're 2-0 down, suddenly the criticism of them is just over-egged. Mm-hmm. But it's actually when, you know, when you get back to 2-2, that like they're, you know, they're fucking heroes, that's what they do, all that sort of stuff. So I, I do try and take some of the criticism where a, a wee pinch of salt. Uh, we had uh, Scott McIntosh, who's a, a Hearts fan, runs the Amaroos for Let's Run page. He said, ultimately, if he was consistent, he wouldn't be playing these trades in Scotland. Hibs and Hearts can't afford the full package. Uh, which is probably a, a, a fair point. Um, he also uh, said that it'll take Montgomery at least two transfer windows to identify the players he needs to fit in uh, what is a brave style of play with a fine line between reward and risk. In the short term, he'll lose games. He likes the Jaguar, or not mobile or technical enough for that double pivot role. Uh, you mentioned Jogman teams press in your defensive third. That back five also needs major surgery with Miller and Abita providing good support going forward, but neither appear to be strong defensively. And with Boyle and Yuan, you'll always have a 4 2 4 system suits Easter Road. From a Hearts point of view, it's certainly two points drop with individual errors killing us, along with changing shape in the midfield. Um, there's kind of a lot to, to pack out there. Like, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure I agree with the assessment of Jago. Um, Mikey Stewart was talking about Jago on the radio. Um, mm-hmm. After the game, and, and he was talking about, um, he actually said he's a better option than Doyle A's. Mm-hmm. He did say that. Because, I'm because not sure I agree with that either. But... I know, I know, and I thought that goes against the grain for uh, well, well, hip fans. Mm-hmm. But I like how okay, we said it before. I like Jago, I like what he brings to the team, and he certainly, since Montgomery come, has come in, has proved to be a valuable player in that in that role. Um, but we'll, we'll see, like, I. Again, you point to individual errors being responsible for the goals, but like they've got a, our own goal as one of their goals. Do you know what I mean? Like, if they get me an individual right. error than, than that, it's like it's not just one way that they benefited for, for individual errors. But anyway, uh, John R said, Doidge is just not good enough. Alf is one of the most intelligent players I've seen in a Hibs jersey. Reminds me of Brewster. I did think Doidge had a tough shift yesterday, but uh, Alf. I we spoke about him before, Colin. What would you make of Alf so far? Oh, I really like him. Like it, he's got such a nice touch, and um, I, 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 I just think he's good. He blocked that shot, like you said, uh, John. <laughs> but other than that, he's um, he, he's just a good footballer, eh? Like just skillful and uh, fine speed. If that was Dodge in the way, it maybe like bounces it the heel and goes in the top. That's it. That's <laughs> a goal. <laughs> um, Richard Howes uh, talking of. Uh, you answered, is everything a hips cult hero should be? Our fans claim they require players to get you off your seat, but every time Paul comes near him, there's loads of folk getting agitated and shouting at him about what he needs to do. I, I think that's a good point. Is like you either want a player like that or you didn't. Like, and if you want a player like that, you need to have a bit of patience with him. I think, yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. what I'm with you, and I'd much rather have him in the team than no faults and all. I, I mean, I think, like, say the, the two goals that he scored yesterday, um. It's, it's maybe an unfair comparison, but I think him and Boyle kind of like similar because of their pace, because of their position on the pitch, that kind of thing. Boyle had that tag early on in his Hibs career where he was a wee bit frustrating that, you know, his, his finishing could have been better, but he's definitely improved since then. And obviously, you know, that was uh, rewarded by his, his move to the, the Middle East. And, and Yuan could turn into that player as well. Like, I think there was almost a suggestion that he, he sort of pops up with goals and assists in in games where it maybe doesn't matter but there's also like a whole host of other stuff where he's been instrumental in, in Hibs goals that have you know been 
very important in terms of results. So, like, look at his uh, his run and his pass for for Boyle against Lucerne in the, the away leg. Mm-hmm. And then there's, there's, there's situations like yesterday. There was the, the first RB at the start of last season. There was the, the cutback for Boyle in the, the game against Rangers. Like, he is as frustrating as he can be. I think you're right. There's lots of times where his contribution is just... It outweighs the negative sides of his game. I, I, I'm one of the ones who get frustrated. I've, I've, I do, but I appreciate the good stuff. I just think he's got more ability or he could do it more often mm-hmm. because I think decision-making sometimes is, is a wee bit slow or lacking. And But that's something I suppose we're trying to develop and that's why, to back to Scott's point, um, he's here now. We'll, we'll make him better and as soon as we make him better somebody's going to buy him Aye. because of the ability he's got and, and he's in he's developing at the moment and hopefully when he's this, hopefully we get some time when his decision making gets better and it's no watching the English Premier League when we're going oh I mind him Aye. Can I ask a question about you and actually just as it's popped into my head so I think when you and first came in if you remember him in the, the pre-season games when Hibs played was it Portugal? Under Johnson, you remember there was like work permit issues with a variety of players coming in, and Johnson had described Yuan at the time as having a lot of pace but being very raw. Do you think that there's, or how much of a, an improvement do you think there's been in him since then? Well, I think he's much better than than when he, he first came in. I think you can you can definitely see it. I don't know if it's like the um, like the confidence whether he's, he's definitely his English is much better. You saw him interviewed on. Uh, sports scene last night very very comfortable with uh, speaking English, and it was mentioned that he couldn't speak English when he when he came to the club. So I'm um, you know I've no fact check that maybe he's been able to speak English well the whole time, and they've just maybe he was just lying. Maybe just wanted to put like a wee bit of you know put a bit of mitigation out for him not being great. But I I think he's he's up there as being a, like almost the best player. I mean, Joe Newell's probably the best player at the minute. You and you would speak about it in the same breath. You know, he's yeah. He's got that and I think longer. we've we've got him on our predictions like this for this season. Like he did appear, so it's not like I'm trying to change or we're trying to change your thoughts because I've got him doing his player of the year. So have you? Aye. Uh, prediction. Um, and it, have you got that sat in front of you just now? I just opened it. It's on my it's on my notepad thing. Who did just that have? As we were speaking, uh, you had Joe Neal. Um the top scorer I've got him we've both got him down as top scorer John as well so it's not like we're chopping and changing our opinion here we did that yeah. pre-season so however like I do think and I do get frustrated with him but I think it's because you can see he's got something there and it, it's like do it more often is, is my do it quicker like that's because <laughs> because he, he, he's clearly got the ability to do it um, and if he's player of the year and top scorer this year I'm well in on the prediction league so <laughs> Uh, right, we're, we're almost out of time, so try to get through these next ones quite quickly. But I thought this was a good one from Stephen Bell. He said, may have already been asked at some point already, but how does Levitt get in the team with Neil and Jekyll starting to form a decent partnership? I thought Levitt looked very assured when he came on. I think there's possibly a role. Because that, that, the way the striker drops in, and and they seem to take turns on it. LaFondry does it, and then he does it, and then even Dodge has been that mm-hmm. midfield. like And they're... So you, there's almost one up front with the two wide guys and, and an attacking midfielder in there. If Levitt's an attacking midfielder, could be talking absolute shite. I'm not sure if he is. I think we got told he was maybe an attacking midfielder. And he's there was, I'd, I'd need to go and see if I could dig out, but there was definitely chat about a heat map because I think there was, was there uh, an idea that, that he was a, a deep line deeper. midfielder? I showed yeah. him playing deeper with these heat maps. Ah, right, okay. like it's almost counter to that, but I think if you look at what he's good at, he definitely would suit a number 10 role. I think he's, he reminds me very much of a Scott Allen type player. Um, I guess it's, uh, it's, it's a difficult one because Jago and you work well, but the one, well, I suppose the two times now that we've uh, seen Levitt and you play together, which was against Lucerne, they were excellent together and they played well together when he came on uh, yesterday um, and have spent a lot of money on him. So you would think they want to get him in the team. That's not a player that they brought in to sit on the, uh, sit on the bench. So, it's interesting. I think he, I think he brings more than Jago does. But you lose something defensively if you take yeah. Jago out the the team. So and the defence is, is is constantly criticised, isn't it? As a weak Aye. point, like even you know everybody keeps talking it down. Um, so um, maybe when that gets sorted, what you can do without that. Yeah, Jago. 
Uh, right, just going to fire through a few because I think we've, we've kind of covered most of the stuff now. Right, Ellie Yuan is a maverick. This is from Leon. Uh, everything he tries to do is positive and exciting. Why are people still getting frustrated with him? That's uh, the tweet. Ron's I was just fucking explain that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you listen to Naismith on Sports Sound, it was decision making, decision making, decision making, decision making, decision making, decision making, not by him. But I know his. Uh, <laughs> <else>. <laughs> <laughs> Craig said, Alf's movement is awesome and I agree Lowry causes lots of trouble. Looks a player. Great fight back and nice to see an entertaining derby. Uh, I think Neesmith needs, needs to start talking about his charity work more often. Aye, he's not done that for years. I don't yeah, know why he's not. Get a bit of, get a bit of uh, he's, uh, good grace with folk if he did. When hearts and minds. When you hear him talking on the radio and everything, I find it hard to just like, can stay awake almost because he's boring. You imagine his team talks and that must be fucking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're a player, you'd be sitting thinking, this place could do my paint job. Can, or, can you make it frank? Can you make it frank? Can you frank? Can you do it again? <laughs> okay, so I'm a bit of fluff on your shorts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Neil Waters said, "Alf made all the difference. Top quality and clever. Levitt looked good when he came on and looked to play forward quicker. And Yuan is as frustrating a player I've ever seen, but has the ability needs to play for ninety minutes. Though, but positives again. Uh, DJ 1875 said, "Not taking off Yuan for Levitt at half time swung it for me." And Credit uh, DJ 1875 here. He was slaughtering you, and he said he absolutely should have come off at half time earlier on that. So, uh, well played. Um, Ian T says, Well, we, we hear the outcry from the pundits about the missed opportunity to showcase a game. Uh, what the hell are we doing with a sold out derby not featuring on TV? Well, we might touch on Make that on, uh, uh, on, on the extra time. We're going to still floating ideas for topics. So that's extra time is going to be a surprise package. We're not going to tell you what we're, it's we're about. Starting that, uh, we're starting that. We're about to start recording in about two minutes and <laughs> we've not got a topic yet, right? So <laughs> it is like a, a mystery the box for you. Mystery box. Behind the scenes at long uh, <laughs> Um Ian McRobbie said the difference being if we'd gone 2 0 down under the last few managers we'd have lost. I think that's that's fair to say. Uh, and Callum CMA says uh, you, you can see Alf talking to the likes of Yuan and Venti, telling them where to move, etc. That's just what Levitt was really good when he came on and moved to play forward. Um and I'll make these last two. Uh, Ventus Plenty said, I think we've had more draws under Montgomery so far than under Johnson over a whole season. Where we would where we would have in all likelihood have lost that 3 or 4 now. But I'm not sure whether points-wise we're any better off than we would have been under Johnson over those past four or five games. That's interesting, eh? But the field good's better. Yeah. Because you're not getting beat. And that's what and that, that applies. Like I've, I've specifically talked about Darby's not getting beat, but... At the end of the season, you'll go, fucking hell, look at the, the fucking draws. If I could have turned one or two of them in, we might have finished, whatever. Aye. But but at the moment, it, it's... it's uh, if you're losing games, if, if you'd lost yesterday, you know that would have been folk with immediately, especially that they played in the first half. Aye. We hadn't recovered for that. There would already be folk almost thinking, who's the next manager going to be then? If he well, doesn't win two of the next three, I can't it's the way to Rangers and home to Celtic, but can if he doesn't win one of them or take a minimum of fucking five points or can the mad shouts that folk do? Aye. Five points isn't even possible. Well, six then. I want six. There was a boy behind us moaning that he never had that. Montgomery does have a plan B. Came mm. in we were telling him, he's not got a plan B. And, yeah. Well, uh, and these are the complaints that would have come through. Uh, right, last one. Belgium last car said, Alf is a huge player for us. Not just his goals, but the touch and movement he has. Creates for others. Definitely a signing. That's worked. And yeah. leadership, mate, eh? What about that? Eh? You all have a thought on that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. speaking of leadership, because we've definitely talked about this before with, uh, I remember conversations with D- David Gray, because I asked about leadership. What does leadership on a football pitch look like? What you you know, what is it you're expecting from a player to show? And Matty, you talked about David Gray launching into a challenge and Joe Newell winning the ball in a, it was probably a 70-30 mm-hmm. in Shanklin's favour. Shankland, I think, ends up coming away with a booking because he's gone in, well, whatever the thing I, I judged it to be. That was, I thought that was huge. Uh, and I don't think that that's a challenge that's typically associated with Joe Newell, but I think he, like, he's obviously a, a, a big Birmingham fan and he talked about it with the, like, our trip down to Aston Villa. And I think you saw that Birmingham player in a in a Midlands derby against Aston Villa, albeit in a, in a hip shot. And you saw that yesterday from a, an Edinburgh derby perspective. And I thought that was massive. Mm-hmm. Definitely agree. You going to say something to call? I can't make call, isn't it? It doesn't matter. It's is, it is Shanklin's tackle. Oh, he got booked early doors, five Aye. minutes, and nobody tried to wind him up. Disappointed like, that. He's here, man. He's got, to get, he's got to last shoot. Can he's, no, he's on a straight goal scoring run because they've not been getting penalties, so his goals have dried up. 
get in his fucking ear, he's booked in five minutes, he's got to get sent off. Aye. He got sent off before in a derby, because he's obviously not got the ten people in it. Fucking hell, get in him. Mad. Anyway, right, well done uh, Hibs yesterday for coming back. It was only a point, and I get the argument about can they celebrate the draw and all the rest of it, but fuck it. Uh, anybody that can celebrate if you're coming for a 2 0 down at Tiny to, to come away with something in 83 seconds, you know, to turn the game like that, you're not a football fan. Like, uh, is it, uh, mm. that, Football's not as binary as that, is it? It's not exactly case of like, like, you're yeah, delighted you lose or you draw or whatever. It's... Exactly. And if, if it had been 2 2 with us going 2 0 up and, and uh, drawing 2 2, we would have been on here like talking about it like it was a defeat. So. Uh, enjoy, enjoy these ones when they when they come. Do they happen that often? We have so. Well, I was all lined up for. I was a follow on for the ones in January, February last year. Aye. At, at two nil down. So. Aye. Right. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your talking points, folks. Uh, we will be recording extra time just now with uh, a hastily put together, but very very good half hour episode for subscribers. And if you want to hear that, you can go to uh, our Twitter and click on the wee link on our profile. It's only two quid. We might actually make somebody in the toilets at uh, Malone's yesterday who, who was like, I've not paid the £2 yet. And, but it looked like they were swithering. I think they might. You take Why is it? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it we always meet folk in the toilets? I bumped into a boy in the toilet, I'm sure, down at Villa Park. And then yesterday at Tynecastle, so he was like, oh, it's you off long by. I, was like, I, I saw you in Birmingham. I was like, oh, aye, it's you. Like, just every time, it's just on his head in the cubicle. Aye. Well, it's, it's I really had happen to be in Hamden as well. Aye. Weird this. I, I do hang about the toilets a lot, to be fair. Do you know, like, so hoping it happens. I've got a t shirt on, Matt, long bangers on it. I'm definitely the most unapproachable. <laughs> I, it doesn't happen to me in the toilets. So I must have a look about me. Maybe it's, maybe it's a big reason. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> right. On, on that note, uh, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. I drank all the whiskey in Tennessee I don't drink water, no